Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّكَ رَجِيمٌ He said to Iblis, you are now an outcast. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now turns to Adam alayhi salam and he says to him to live in a place which he called Jannah. Adam alayhi salam was in paradise alone at first. And it says that istawhash, meaning he felt lonely. And he didn't know what this loneliness was from. So one day, Adam alayhi salam found, it says that he was napping. He found before him his wife Hawa, a woman. And his loneliness immediately faded, it went away. And he asked her, Man anti, who are you? She said, Allah created me so that you can find your peace and tranquility with me. He said to Adam alayhi salam and Hawa about Jannah. He said, Wakula minha haythu shi'tuma. Eat from this paradise anything you desire. Anything at all you desire, take it from Jannah. But there was one condition as we all know. Allah had said, stay inside Jannah. You've got all of these things to enjoy. But this one tree, you don't eat from this one tree, the forbidden tree in Jannah. Shaitan came and he tricked them. He tricked them by saying, Wallahi. And he said, Wallahi, by Allah, I swear this is true. He started to glamorize what beautiful things could happen to them if they ate from that tree. Allah did not say don't eat from it. He didn't say don't touch it. He didn't say don't sit un under it. He said, Wala taqraba. Don't even come near it. You will both become among the ones who have oppressed. You will do injustice to yourselves. And so Iblis made Adam and Hawa think of the tree. Think of the tree. Think of the tree. So he said, O oh Adam, O oh Eve, Allah hasn't told you to stop eating from this tree except there's a secret behind this tree. You eat from this tree, you will become like the angels. You are mortals. You will die one day. If you want to have an everlasting life, then you eat from this tree. He said, you will be everlasting or you will become like the angels. Your mortal bodies will change to angel bodies. And to sum it all up, to put the icing on the cake, he said, Wallahi! He said, think about it. God did not forbid you from that tree except that it's going to turn you into angels. Then he told them, God did not forbid you from the tree except that you will live eternally. He started making up all these different possibilities. Adam salam being a prophet, Adam salam never heard anyone lie ever in his life, ever, ever heard anyone lie and he fell for it. And so did Hawa alayhi salam. She fell for it. And they ate from the tree and when they ate, بَدَتَ لَهُمَا سَوَآتُهُمَا Their clothes disappeared and it was very embarrassing for them. What happened at that moment when they ate from the tree? There was actually a concealing. There was a part of their body, which was their aura. It was concealed with light, with nur. They weren't naked running around. When they took from the tree, that nur went away. And so they were naked. Suddenly, the shame came to them. From what? From less covering, less concealment. This is because every sin, my dear brothers and sisters, leads to immorality. It leads us to desensitization. Straight away they took They took the, the large leaves of paradise and they started to cover themselves. And Allah said what? Alam anhakuma an tilkuma shajara. Did I not tell you, O oh Adam? Did I not tell you, O oh Eve? That I warned you from eating from this tree. Why? That the shaitan, the devil, he is your open enemy. Did not tell you this. They fell into embarrassment. What could they say? They said, 
وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين Oh our Lord we have wronged ourselves and if you don't have mercy on us if you don't forgive us then we will be of the losers they realized their mistake but it was too late and now they have to bear what will happen to them so they got sent down to the earth so our father and mother Adam and Hawa were finally expelled from the Garden of Eden as Allah explains in the Quran and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he warned us he warned us from the shaitan and he said beware of him he is your enemy look at what he did to your father and mother he took them out of Jannah when they were once in there do not let him take you out of it in other words don't let him stop you from entering it Adam and Hawa that were sent down to earth Allah says Allah said to them descend from it and they were sent down to this earth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them I shall be with you, I will guide you, if you need me I'll be there. In one narration it says that Adam alayhi salam landed in India. Adam alayhi salam he came down to earth and landed in India. And Hawa in Asham or near Mecca in that area. Allah knows best there's differences of opinions but what we do understand is that they came down in separate places and so they began the search for one another this search my dear brothers and sisters is inherited today when people are searching for their spouses Adam alayhi salam and Hawa searched for each other they became acquainted they found each other on the mountain of Arafat. That's the name of the mountain, the mountain of acquaintance. And there, my dear brothers and sisters, they renewed their life here on earth. There's a difference of opinion about how long Adam and Hawa stayed in paradise. We don't know exactly. But the majority of scholars agree that it was more than 40 years, at least. And he lived on earth for about a thousand years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam alayhi salam and Hawa children. The first child to be born for Adam alayhi salam was a boy by the name of Qabil. He was born first and straight after him in the same stomach was a sister. So they were twins. Qabil's twin sister was beautiful. Whereas Qabil was not very handsome. After him came Habil. And he also had a twin sister. But Habil was a little bit more handsome. And his twin sister wasn't as attractive. It was only in those times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed brothers and sisters to marry from each other. But not their twin. And it's narrated in many hadiths that Hawa carried many stomachs more than a hundred stomachs, 200 stomachs, and each one of them was a twin. So she always carried twins, a boy and a girl, every time. So Qabil and Habil were the first two, and they had twin sisters. You weren't allowed to marry your twin sister. So they'd marry from the twin sisters of others. Adam alayhi salam decreed that Habil would marry the sister of Qabil, and Qabil would marry the, the twin sister of Habil. Qabil had a sickness in his nafs. That was his test. His test was jealousy. Being the older brother, being the one who wanted the, the nicer sister. He wanted his own twin sister because she was prettier. Habil didn't mind. But this was the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can't marry his own twin sister. This is haram. So Qabil got very jealous. Habil tried to advise him. And Habil was stronger actually. It was said that he is stronger physically. He tried to advise him. My brother, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is his decree. 
Now Adam السلام, knew about this, so he brought them together and he said to them, Okay. He said to him, why don't you both go and offer an offering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see which one will be accepted. Habil, he was a shepherd. He had sheep. And Qabil was a farmer. He grew wheat and crops. Habil went and got his finest, fattest, best sheep. And he gave it as an offering. Qabil went and got his, his worst bits of wheat that he had. And so Allah accepted the fine one and rejected the ugly one. Allah mentions this in the Quran and recites upon them the true story of the two sons of Adam when they offered a sacrifice and it was accepted from one of them and not accepted from the other. The latter said, the other person whose offering was not accepted said, I will kill you to his brother. Allahu Akbar. Oh brother, if you stretch out your hand against me to kill me, I shall not stretch out my hand to kill you. For I fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Habil was actually stronger than Qabil and he could. And he could have killed his brother if he wanted to. But Habil's piety to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped him. It's his piety, it's something that he had developed inside of him that stopped him from this terrible act. And then he says, Inni alameen. He tells you the reason why he did not extend his arm out to kill his brother. Why? He said, I fear Allah, the Lord of all mankind. Allah says, His soul then prompted him to kill his brother. And he killed him and became one of the losers. Now when he killed his brother, Allah tells us in the Quran that Qabil didn't know what to do with his body. So Allah sent a raven or a crow scratching into the earth to show him how to bury the corpse of his brother. Allah sent two crows because it says that he carried his brother around and started walking everywhere and didn't know what to do with the corpse of his brother. First death, they didn't know how to bury. So Allah sent two crows and they fought each other in front of Qabil. One killed the other and then it went and made a hole in the ground and buried it with soil. After he buried his brother and it was over, Qabil felt regret. He regretted, but he did not repent. The regret came back to him. But guess what? He did not do anything about it. He did not repent. He did not make tawbah. He did not ask Allah for forgiveness. He didn't try to compensate his actions. The story then after that is very interesting. What happened? Qabil did not go back to his father. And the news came to Hawa first, to their mother. Some narrations say that Iblis himself came to Hawa. And he said to Hawa, Qabil killed Habib. And she said, killed? What does kill mean? In another narration, Qabil didn't know how to kill him. So, Iblis came and showed him how to kill him. He was trying to strangle him and try to put, pull him, but he didn't know how to kill him. So he told him, grab a huge rock and throw it on his head. So he, they learned how to kill and Hawa didn't know what death was. So he said to her, she said, what do you mean? What's killing? What's, what's death? He said, Iblis told her, it means that he can no longer eat or talk or walk or drink. Then she started to cry. Adam السلام, approached Hawa and he asked her what's wrong in this narration and she wouldn't answer. She kept on crying. He asked her a second time. She wouldn't answer. She kept on crying and he asked her a third time. She kept on crying and she wouldn't answer. So Adam السلام, kept silent. Qabil ran to the mountains it is said. Now he had gone and thereafter what happened? Adam السلام, and his wife Hawa السلام, they had many children. And Adam alayhi salam used to constantly remind them and he used to tell them. He used to call them regularly and tell them that this is what you need to do and that is what you need to do and so on. And this is how shaitan, they used to gather together and he used to remind them how shaitan led him astray and how shaitan was very jealous and so on. So there is something for us to learn from this as well. We need to gather our children 
and we need to constantly remind them not only of our beginnings but of the messenger of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something very interesting again where Adam alayhi salatu was salam got sick he got ill he got ill at a certain stage and look at Allah's plan Allah made him wish for something wish for what certain fruits he had eaten in Jannah he ate some fruits in paradise he still remembered the taste so he was wishing for it making dua to Allah saying ya Allah I'm wishing for these fruits so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him that at a certain place you will find something not that you will find the fruits but at a certain place you will find something but he was unhealthy he was not healthy enough to go there so he decided to send some of his children he says go to that place and you will find something for me there so when they went there they found some angels a group of angels these angels told the children of Adam we are angels and we want you to go back to your father he is ill and his time is up Allahu Akbar so they walked with Adam with the children of Adam alayhi salam back to Adam alayhi salam and as they entered as they entered Hawa may peace be upon her she recognized this angel is the angel of death the angel of death so she quickly started going behind Adam alayhi salatu was salam and he says no 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 don't worry move away I was created before you he was not worried that oh, now why am I going and so on he gathered his children on his deathbed and he reminded them saying Allah will send messengers to you he will not leave you alone he will send messengers to you and messages these messengers will come different languages different names different dialects but their message will all be one calling you to worship one Allah the one who made you and to stay away from the devil and to be careful that the biggest crime anyone can commit is to associate a partner with the creator and after he reminded his children the angels took his soul away and he passed away and he passed away happily he was happy to go why was he happy to go very interesting I think that's a lesson when I was reading about it really it brought tears to my eyes he was happy to go because he knew he is going back to that heaven that he came from he knew he's going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was happy to go because he had problems here on the earth he had tests he had difficulties he first hunted for his wife, then he had the problems with his children and so on. And now he had to taste death, but that death was getting him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from this, there is a narration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Tuhfatul mu'minil mawtu. The gift of a true believer is death. Why? You're going back to your maker, your creator. There's no more inflation. There's no more robberies. There's no more power cuts. There's no more, you know, credit and debt and people following you and running behind you and sickness and cough and what have you. Everything ends. It stops. There is only justice and goodness. And for you is what you wish and what you want and what you, whatever you desire.